Don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two newly released books, Football, A Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? These books feature over 100 stories from current and former coaches, players, executives, and entertainers from across the football landscape describing what got them involved in a game, what they love about it, and what life lessons the game taught them. You can find your copy or order your copy from our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, here on the campus at Sacred Heart University with head football coach Mark Nofri. Coach, thanks for taking time. Thanks, 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 thanks for having me up here. Well, it's great to be here because, you know, I've watched you guys from afar have success. In 2012, you were the interim head coach. You were 2-9. and nine. Once they removed that tag, the following year, you go 10-3, and three, make the playoffs, win a championship, back-to-back -back NEC Coach of the Year awards. All because something changed. You know, that's a process that has to take place. What foundation was laid in 2012 that has brought you guys to where you are today? Because you haven't had a losing season, you know, since you they removed that interim tax. So what foundation was laid back then? Um, you know, obviously in 2012, you know, we had a lot of adversity, you know, with our head coach being sick at the time and me coaching the position and shorter coach on staff and trying to run a program for the first time. and. Uh, you know, after it was a rough year. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was rough on the staff. It was rough on me and the players. And uh, we got together in the off season, and you know, we said that first we had a meeting as coaches, and we wanted to change the culture. We wanted to change the culture. Um, we wanted to turn it into a winning program and, and have the kids feel good about themselves. So we did. We had a big meeting with the team. We did a survey. You know, we kind of asked them point blank about everything about the program. We kind of tore it apart, and we looked at you know. The practice habits to the game day uh, situations to training room to how we travel everything we went through everything lift in the whole thing and the kids you know wrote their opinions on paper and we got it we gathered all the information we met as coaches and then we met with the team and we met for about an hour and a half to two hours and kind of cleared the air we said at the time Anybody that doesn't want to be here, you know, we'll, you know, you can leave. We'll sign your release. But the guys that stay, um, we're going to develop, you know, a culture here. We're going to change the culture. We're going to develop a program, and we're going to base it on kids that are tough, hard-nosed kids uh, that like to grind. I refer to them as grinders on and off the field. They're going to work. You know, um, you're not deserving of anything. Everything you get, you earn. And I wanted tough kids that play with a chip on their shoulder. You know, you take a kid when you're recruiting them. Uh, maybe somebody doesn't want it because he's an inch too short or a step too slow. I find that kid he's a good fit for what we do uh, we put him my my two coordinators do a great job you know scheme wise and fitting the talent to what they do and they put him in the position to succeed and I think that year um, from January when the kids got back on campus through the spring and through the summer and the off-season conditioning program was fantastic I mean the kids were buying in to what we were teaching. We had some great seniors that year uh, leadership We had a great junior class um, Had it been on the field a lot as a freshman and a sophomore So there was some experience coming back and a lot of talent and it, it just kind of all came together and blended in that season in 2013 we opened up with one or two wins, which made the kids feel good, and you could see the progress that they put in. Now they're reaping some of the benefits. Hey, wait a minute here. You know, we, we're working hard, and it's paying off, and we're buying into what the coaches are teaching and saying. Um, and then the next thing you know, we're five and all. You know, and, and it, it really just kind of snowballed. They started believing in what they did and the process and how it worked, and they saw the success that they were having by being five and all. Um, and that year, we ended up 10 and two, won the NEC for the first time uh, since 2001. And it was a really a junior-oriented team with some seniors sprinkled in. I had great kids, great senior leadership, um, but they believed in what we set in place in the offseason together. You know, I knew as a head coach first time, I had to make some adjustments and some changes. Um, believe me, I'm not perfect to this day now. I still need to make adjustments and changes and learn from it. I think every day goes by, you can learn something different or learn something new to make you a better person or a better head coach. And I continue to do that. And I listened to what the kids had to say. They bought into what we were teaching. Um, and we said that we were going to change the culture, and we did. So we, we go 10 and 2 that year, and we lose in the first round of Fordham. This, in 2014, we had uh, 
pretty much lump a lot of seniors that year who were been on the field like I talked about mm -hmm. since their freshman year and you know now they got the targets on their back it's a little bit different you know okay guys listen now you're you're going from being last in the conference to winning it mm -hmm. this year they're picking us to win the conference that, that may even be a bigger challenge you know are you a one-year wonder you know uh, when they pick you first you know, are you gonna be able to live up to expectations and it was hard it was tough and I told the kids and they knew it it wasn't gonna be easy um, especially playing you know when you got a target on your back and already winning, you want to prove to people that you can do it back-to-back -back years and not be a one-time deal. Um, and they did a great job. You know, like I said, we had we had some bumps. You know, we were nine and two. Same thing. We drew Fordham in the first round again. Uh, went down there and played them in the NCAA uh, first round game, and uh, you know we got beat. Um, but those two years that established, hey, you know what? We're going to be a, hopefully a top 25 team at the FCS level. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be one of the top teams in the NEC year in and year out. The kids bought into what we were teaching and what we were doing in the off season and what we were looking for, you know, and I talk about it all the time. If you go back and you look at some of the games, um, we grinded out some games because I got kids that can play. You know, they got they believe in what they're doing, they believe in what we're teaching, and they find ways to win the game. And to me, that's just a tough, hard-nosed kid that fits our profile. Um, you know, obviously we changed the offense um, in 2013 uh, to a no-huddle spread, uh, which we do now. Coach Bowles runs an up-tempo up speed offense based on how fast he wants to go. Uh, defensively, you know, Coach Wiss has got so many different packages and so many pressure packages. Um, and using, you could see there may be 30 to 35 kids on the defensive side of the ball that are on certain packages that got a role. You know, you find roles for those kids and they feel good about what they're doing and you put them in places to succeed um, and it gets everybody kind of playing together on the same page. And, um, and the one thing that we keep trying to hang our head on is be win the special teams battle every week because I think sometimes that gets overlooked and that plays a huge factor and you know determining the outcome of a game so with the change of the offense and the defense and the two coordinators doing a great job with the scheme and putting kids in the right spot uh, us having a strength and conditioning coach Chris Fee that we hired two years ago uh, has done a phenomenal job uh, buying into what we're teaching the kids on and off the field uh, trying to play hard all the time don't take things for granted you know you earn what you get um, and just finding the right I think finding the right fit for us in our program you know, finding a kid that wants to be here, finding a kid that wants to grind, find a kid um, that maybe, like I said, that was overlooked, but he's going to come here with a chip on his shoulder. And I think um, the, the other thing the last three years is between Chris Fee, our strength coach, and uh, the position coaches, we've done a great job of developing kids. Kids that have come in maybe as a walk-on um, that's now starting for us by his junior or senior year, or someone that you know even was a, scar a partial scholarship kid um, who we didn't know too much about as a freshman, sophomore, maybe he's not he's not the right fit, and next thing you know, he's starting, he's come a long way, and is developed. So I think that's a, a tribute to the assistant coaches working with our kids, but um, it, it's been a great, three years I should say um, the first year was tough but the last three years have been great um, I'm looking forward to continuing that and continuing what we do with some tweaks here and there um, but our, our kids are doing a great job buying into what we're teaching one thing that that, uh, that a lot of people talk about is a big debate whether or not momentum is real or not I mean we see it in basketball we see it in other sports once guys start to believe or not believe it can definitely go positively or negatively so is momentum real and, and did that play a role into you guys having that success in your first year as, as head coach I think it did there's there's no doubt in my mind I think it did um, if you go back and you look at 2012 you know when we were two and nine we lost four games in the last minute where if you you know maybe you win one or two of those games and it snowballs the other way and hey we end up with a winning season um, you know you played a lot of young kids um, but when you lose games um, in the last minute, four or five in a row, the kids start to get discouraged and they start questioning me, you know, is this the process, is it really working, uh, how hard am I, you know, working and, you know, where's the benefit from it? And I think when we started 2013 and we won the first five games, uh, the kids see the success. And like I said, it could change in a drop of a hat. And I, and I talk about it all the time. Um, it's very easy to go from two and nine. Um, it's hard to go from two and nine to 10 and two. But it's very easy to go from 10 and 2 to 2 and 10. Uh, make a drop of a hat, it could happen. You know, you get 
you know, you, we don't like to make, you know, excuses for things, but, you know, you get a bunch of injuries, you lose some starters, maybe somebody um, flunks out because of academics or they transfer because this isn't the right school for them mm -hmm. and they're not happy here, but a lot of things um, outside influences can play a factor in that season or those winning records being flipped the other way. Um, like I said, in 2012, we lost four games in the last minute. And if you go back and you look at 2014, I think we've won four or five games where it was either close or we were behind or tied. But because we hung in there and we grinded it out, and I had tough kids that believed in what the process and what we were doing, and we found the right kid that was just a tough, hard-nosed kid, and we put him in the position to succeed, and they won the first five or six games and believed in it, that they were able to overcome that adversity and, and come out on the top. So we, we have to keep preaching that to our kids that, hey, believe in the process, it's worked. You know, you're gonna get hit with adversity. You're gonna get hit with adversity on and off the field at all times. You know, how are you gonna overcome it? We talk about it all the time. It's gonna come. I don't know when it's gonna come. The coaches don't know when it's gonna come. If we knew, we'd tell you, you know, right. we prepare you for it, but um, are you prepared to handle it? Are you physically and mentally tough enough to overcome it? And uh, you know, we say the same thing, you know, do your job. That's all we ask. You got 11 guys on one side of the ball. If everybody's doing their job and they're pulling their weight and they believe in each other, you should be able to overcome anything that's thrown your way. Coach, one of the biggest questions, or one of my favorite questions I always ask every coach, because I like to pick people's brain, uh, what's your coaching philosophy? Um, I, my philosophy is, uh, well, obviously, um, you got to have great assistant coaches. I mean, you're only as good as the guys that work with you and around you. Um, and number one, you, like I said, you have the assistant coach. You got to have the support from the administration, and you got a lot of um, people that are involved in your program that play a big part that people don't understand or see. And I think it, it starts with you know you got to have a great strength and conditioning coach. Who, you know, I'm a real big fan of Chris Vrs. Um, I trust him. I believe in him. And sometimes the coaches, you know, the assistants, they're busy. They're here. They're there doing a lot of work. I bounce a lot of ideas off of him and share, you know, some uh, some thoughts and maybe get things off my chest with him. Uh, you got to have a great training room um, and a person that works with you there. Um, my AD, Bobby Valentine, is phenomenal in terms of uh, a high energy guy that's always around the athletes. It's You can go up and you can pick his brain, you can talk to him because I mean obviously he's been in major league sports right. his whole life. Uh, he's a great guy to talk to and just get a feel for different things that have come up because I'm sure if, if it has he's seen it or heard it. Um, I got a great senior vice president, Jim Barquinero, who supports the university, um, who's built a lot of this, what we see now today. Um, and Brad Hurlbut, who's my direct um, sports report, the guy that I report to for um, football and oversees our program and basketball and a few others. Um, travels with us on game day. Again, he's a sounding board. He's somebody that I can talk to and run things by. Um, so I think, you know, then we have academic advisors, then you have student managers, then you have an equipment room. There's, there's a lot of people that have their hand in your program. Um, and me as a head coach, I, I just, I want to make sure I surround myself with good people um, that buy into what we're teaching and what we're doing. Um, I think it starts with me. And then, you know, like I said, then I trust my assistants that, you know, they're going to coach up the kids and they're going to be with those kids and they're going to talk to the kids about anything. You know, we talk about having an open door policy and a lot of times um, kids hear an open door policy, but they're afraid to come through that door and tell you something. Right. But um, the more you get to know them, you know, or the more they hang out with the assistant coaches, I want them to be able to come in here and uh, tell me if something's bothering them, whether it's football related or not. And I tell them, if I can't help you, there's somebody on this campus that can, and we'll put you in front of that person to talk to them. Because I think it's my job as the head coach, um, if you leave your son here for four years, it's my job to monitor him and, and make sure that I act as the parent for those four years that he's away from home and on campus. And um, whatever it is he needs help with, if I can't help some, that student, there's somebody on campus that can. Uh, and those are the people that are involved in your program that people don't see that are behind the scenes. And I think I've been blessed with some great people involved in my program. Uh, they're very supportive. The big thing is I gotta be able to trust people that they're doing the right thing. They're doing what's right for Sacred Heart football and the Sacred Heart student athlete. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't have somebody in here that, uh, you know, they start questioning 
what we do or what I believe in and then they start preaching or they start talking you know everybody's got to be on the same page I think as a head coach you got to make sure you continue to communicate with everybody you talk to everybody and not so much I'm not a big micromanager guy like I let my coordinators handle the X's and O's and I let my position coaches you know coach their guys and answer to the coordinators and the scheme stuff but I like to be involved with okay the personnel decisions the injury report who's playing who's not playing what's our depth chart um, I get involved in the special teams um, but my whole thing is to oversee all those people in different departments and make sure we're all saying the same thing and make sure we're communicating that um, and it's tough obviously when you got a lot of people that answer to you or you have to go to um, you got to make sure that everybody is on the same page and all details are covered and, and my philosophy is football wise number one I want to be physical I want to play hard and I want to play for four quarters you know um, offensively I love it you know the coach Bowles likes to run the ball um, and when you got a stable backs two or three and you can bring different you know type of back in the game and, and change up the pace um, I'm a big fan of running the ball you know some play action um, and some different trick plays that coach Bowles has in there but I like to pound people up front if possible um, and I think it starts up front I think if you're good up front with the offensive line um, and you got a really good quarterback and you got a stable back, you're going to win some football games. And defensively, you know, I, I love what Coach Wiss does. He's a pressure guy. Um, he's not afraid to use, like I said, 35 kids in different positions in the game. Um, he likes to pressure people and get after it. Um, the same thing, we've been very good up front, and I think it starts. Uh, up front on both sides of the ball. If you go back and you look at um, why were we successful, we were able to run the ball and we were able to protect the quarterback on offense. You know, Defensively, we've always stopped the run. We've been in the top three in the conference every year in terms of stopping the run. Um, we get after the quarterback, which is huge. Um, if you can pressure up front and you can stop the run, you're going you're to be okay. You know, Chances are you're going to have a winning record. Um, and We've been good on both sides of the ball and I like what both coordinators teach and what they, what they do. Um, in terms of philosophy for football, but I look I, again. We go back to what's the right fit for Sacred Heart. You know, what type of kid are we looking for? We, you may go out and you say, "Oh, I really like that kid. You know, he's great on film. Um, uh, he he could make a difference. He's a difference maker." But when he comes here and he visits, if he's not the right fit for the kids that we have in the program, if he doesn't fit into the scheme, if he doesn't you know fit with the coaches, don't get a good vibe from him. You know, we'll we'll pass on him. You know, we're gonna find um, the kid that wants to work. The kid, you know, that doesn't give you the problems off the field. And, and we talk about it all the time. Hey, I know you're a college kid. Things are going to happen. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You may be at the wrong place at the wrong time. But we say it all the time. The logo never comes off. The shoe football logo never comes off. So wherever you are on campus, off campus, home in the summer, home on a break, and you're wearing something that says Sacred Heart Football, you represent everybody associated with that program. The players, the coaches, the support staff, you represent us. And your actions could hurt the rest of the team. Not only will they embarrass you and your family, but they're going to hurt us in some way. If you get suspended or you're, you know, kicked out of school, how does that help the team? You know, mm -hmm. so watch what you do. You know, we talk about it all the time. And, and when we go out and recruit, and this is, you know, something we talk about, and it's the truth. I have a lot of kids in the program uh, that are involved in other things besides football. If you want to play a second sport here, I'm okay with it. As long as the other sports coach is okay with it, and we'll split your time. Um, and, and it's okay that you are doing well academically too, because it's hard to play two sports in college. Right. But we say, I got kids that have been in the band, I got kids that have been in the choir, I got kids that do campus ministry, I got kids in you know the business club, I got kids, uh, plenty of kids right now that are RAs, which to me is huge because you're a leader. You know, you're a leader not only in football, but you're in charge of a dorm or a floor, and you're in charge of kids. You know seven days a week. I mean, those things are huge and I think they go a long way. So I encourage kids, hey, listen, you're coming to school with Sacred Heart. When you leave here, you're going to be not only a better football player, but you're going to be a great person and a great human being because you're going to be involved in community service because we do community service projects in the off season. We do fundraisers for them, you know. Um, be involved in other things on campus. Don't just say, I'm coming to Sacred Heart and I'm only going to be a football player. I want kids to experience the full college effect and when they leave here say you know what I played football I was a better football player than when I left and when I came in I had a great experience we won we won you know however many NEC championships um, but I got a, a full college life I was able to experience other things on campus and I think it's important that other school or other people on campus realize that they're good people and good student athletes and not just football players you know so I 
again, philosophy is a little different. I know X's and O's, Y is what I believe in, uh, but I also believe in finding the right fit for us. And if, you, if you're a good kid off the field and you work in the classroom and in the weight room and you're doing community service, you're gonna, it's gonna transfer over to the field. Now you mentioned the style of play you guys had. You run the football, which is what I love. You guys had a tailback a couple of years ago. Spence, because Shadow Spence was was a throwback to, to the old Bam Morris days. They had the big back running downhill. Um, defense is outstanding. Very good on defense. You have an outstanding uh, front seven. Running game, front seven. Is that you? That's your guys' forte. Now, do the guys embrace that? Is that something you practice, and does that give you an advantage on game day? Um, I, obviously we spend a lot of time on it, you know, we, we do, um, and we recruit in the last two or three years, we've kind of been recruiting that way too. It, it's not nothing to take away from our skill guys. Um, right. Obviously we've had some really good skill guys with Tyler Doobie at wide receiver, mm -hmm. you know, RJ Noel, our quarterback's a three-year starter and three-time all-conference. Uh, you go look at the guys in the back end, you know, Gordon Hill, a strong safety force, was All-American. Um, is getting you know in with the Chargers right now as we speak. Um, we've had some good corners and Stephon Thomas and, and Preston Sanford have been all conference kids too. Um, up front, I, I think it's just a philosophy thing of what you recruit. But I, even though I'm a defensive guy, I like big guys up front to can play. You know, I like the big offensive linemen. You know, if you again we go back to if you can run the ball and you can keep your quarterback off the ground, you're, you're gonna have you're gonna be pretty good. Defensively, if you can stop the run and you can pressure the quarterback, that's a long day. That's a long day for somebody. And we do practice it, but I think it goes back to the recruiting methods too, you know. Um, again, with, with our scholarship money, we like to, you know, build from uh, inside out, if you call it, you know what I mean, with the big guys up front and make sure we're good. And uh, we, we've been lucky. We've had some really good guys up front. We've had some good backs. You know, we talk about Cachadas. Sean Bell um, was outstanding with him too. Mm -hmm. He was an academic All-American who was a good change up with Cachadas. And then last year, O.C. and uh, and Nate have been have been pretty good, and and both of those guys are back again next year for us. And then you know you look at our front side of our, this year, we got James Rents, who'll be a, you know a four-time or three-time All NEC, uh, two-time All American outside linebacker, rush end. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Cottrell was an All NEC player last year; he's coming back. Uh, Kevin Berry was an All American line or All Conference linebacker as a sophomore, who's coming off an injury, and he'll be back. So, yeah, I think if you're good up front. Um, you, you're going to be pretty good overall, um, and, and we do practice it in practice. And I think it does make a long day for somebody when you're running the ball down someone's throat constantly, and you're getting four or five yards a clip, and you know, and you, you grind out the clock, and, and you're coming away with a score that puts people on their heels. And then defensively, you know, when you stop the run, and you know it's a passing situation, you can pin those ears back and get after people. Mm -hmm. It makes for a long day, and um, it goes a long way for us on game day. With the amount of both personal success and team success is very hard for a team and individuals on that team to stay grounded and stay focused on the task at hand. How have you guys been able to not only stay grounded but stay consistent in this landscape of college football? I, I think it starts um, with myself and the coaches preaching the same thing and you know it, and we talk about it okay the season ends you know after your last game whether it was in the playoffs or in the regular season now the next season has started. What are we gonna to do to get back to where we gotta be? Um, everything that you did in the past, somebody cannot take it away from you. They can't mm -hmm. change it, they can't take it away from you, you'll always have it. But how bad do you want to take the next step? How bad do you want it? Because it's not gonna happen automatically. It's not gonna be something that continues unless you put the work into it. You know, we talk about, you know, we talk about toughness, you know, I know we were talk a little bit about it you know we talk about it to the kids you know tough tough isn't hitting somebody after the whistle or uh, this guy was holding me so you take a swipe at him because he did no toughness to me is um, are you able to do your job and react when the chips are down or adversity hits how are you handling were you successful you know in those plays when adversity hits that to me is toughness can you fight through uh, an adversity period and come out on top that shows me how tough you are and, and I, again um, I think it all stems with me making sure kids understand what their role is, what their place is, what our goal is. You know, what is our goal? How do we attain that goal? And what do we need to do to attain that goal? And, and every year it goes back to it's great that you won, but that's achieved and it's over and behind us. Now, what are we going to do to get that again? Or what are we going to do to take the next step, maybe win a playoff game and get to the second round? You know, something like that. Um, and it's just everybody, again, in the program preaching the same thing. And we talk, don't take anything for granted. 
everything you get, you've earned. Um, whether it's on the field or off the field, you know, it's, it's the same thing. You earn it. It's not handed to you. And it's constant uh, preaching from us as coaches saying the same thing. I know my assistant coaches. They're, like I said, I trust them. They're a great bunch of guys, and they're preaching the same thing. They don't ever take for granted that we want it back-to-back -back years. They want to get going to the next year as well. They want to get better players in here so we can continue that success year in and year out. You know, it, it, it's hard to win. It's hard to win a college football game. There's no doubt about it. Um, and you have to have everybody on the same page. You have to have some luck. You got to stay injury free. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of things play into it. But if if you're preaching the same thing and you're true to who you are and what you believe in, and you don't stray from what you believe in and what you teach the kids, um, and you're consistent with your you know your talks and what you do, I think that plays a long way in staying grounded and and believing in your philosophy. I mean, I've been here twenty. I'll start my twenty third year in August. Um, 19 as an assistant, you know, I, I love Sacred Heart. It's been great to me and my family. Um, I believe in this place uh, from the top to the bottom. I can't see myself coaching anywhere else but here. Uh, I believe in the kids and, and people ask, you know, why do you stay or what do you like about Sacred Heart so much? And I think it's the people you come in contact with, um, the closeness, the family relationships you've developed here, um, what they think about you and your program, and then the kids. You know, the kids make it too. I mean, you gotta, you gotta realize why were we here? You know, we're here for the 115 kids that are on the football team or the student athletes that are here that are trying to go to school and get an education, play football at the same time. And it's not easy, it goes fast over four years, but they're gonna, you know, come across problems throughout those four years or adversity and you got to be here to make sure you get them through it's your job and I think with everything going on in, in today's world and, and what goes on with the kids life when you're in college and they're in mm -hmm. dorms and they're away from home and they're playing football and they're going to school and we're trying to you know watch film and you try and lift them I mean there's a lot of things that can you know come into play but you got to make sure that everybody understands each day what it is they need to do they can't forget how they got to where they got and what we need to do to accomplish what we want to get done the, the game of football is, is, some say it's poetry in motion. You know, it's probably the best form of reality TV you can find. What is it about the game that you love the most? I love the fact that you're trying to get a hundred and something players on the same page, um, a lot of moving parts. Um, I like the fact that you come in contact with a lot of different people, like we said earlier. You know, there's a lot of people that have their hand in your program that play a big role in that factor if you win or lose or if you're successful. And I like dealing with the people that are involved with our program. I love the kids. Um, I love seeing a kid come in as a freshman. Um, you know, a little scared, doesn't know what's going to happen, doesn't know if he's going to play, uh, you know, school, I got to get through college, I want to get on the field. And then by the time he's a senior, you see this confidence growing in the kid. Not, not only has he grown physically um, and on the football field, maybe from a, a, a you know, kid that didn't even travel as a freshman to someone that's starting, that's possibly all conference as a senior, um, that's grown in the weight room, that's got a 3.0 grade point average, he's going to graduate on time, he's won an, at least one NEC championship, and for him to walk out the door, um, from you know, a teenager to a, a you know a young man that's grown up. I mean, those are some of the things you really like about the game and, and running the program. But I I really enjoy, like I said, the people here on campus who I come in contact with, um, the people that support football, um, that help us success, that make us successful, and and pretty much I think it all comes to a head on Saturdays. You know, you really look forward to Saturdays. You know the. Uh, the Fridays, you know, okay, it's the day before the game, everything's done. You know, you're kind of looking forward to Saturday at 1 o'clock, whatever time you kick off. And then Saturday rolls around and, you know, it's it's uh, being on, in the fall, you know, at a home game. It's, you know, it's packed. Uh, you're winning. There's a lot of people there to support you. Um, but, you know, we, we joke sometimes, too. It doesn't last long. You know, like uh, 4 o'clock rolls around and you're, you know, you get the win. So the scoreboard goes off and it's just like, <laughs> it's a big relief and you're taking a shower and next thing you know you're worried about okay uh, I got next week I got to worry about this team and um, you know they got this running back or this quarterback and how are we going to stop then so um, it's a sense of relief but only lasts a very short period before you're on to the next <laughs> the next game and worrying about what's going to happen and you know the travel um, but I think overseeing all that and being here on the campus and seeing the support and help we get, I really enjoy that. Uh, and most importantly, the kids coming from their freshman year to their senior year and walking out the door um, a better person and, and having a great taste in their mouth about sacred our football. Out of all the things that you can learn in the game of football, what has football taught you? Uh, <laughs> number one, being a part of a team with a lot of people that you have to, you have a job to do. Um, 
the camaraderie obviously but there there's something about a chemistry and coming together and trying to get that many people on the same page uh, it's taught me one that everything's not going to go according to plan there's going to be adversity in the course of a game uh, things are going to change and you got to be able to change on the fly um, but it's taught me that you know you get it's it's a sport made for guys um, that can handle what's being thrown at them you know guys that can rise above the adversity um, and there's a lot of challenges um, there's a lot of moving parts I like that and there's a lot of action um, but it's taught me that you know you got to find the right fit um, for your program and, and the right kid for your program and again there's going to come a day where the kid's not going to put on the pads anymore and hopefully at the end of the day um, that kid had a good experience with you and you've taught that you know individual something um, but to me it, it's about teamwork developing that chemistry um, and, and rising through adversity when things don't go your way and when things get hard you gotta you gotta be able to answer the bell now do you think you would have gotten that life lesson eventually or did football help really expedite I think it? football helped it a lot. Um, obviously, you know, I've learned a lot. My, my mom and dad did a great job uh, raising, you know, me and my brother and my sister, um, and they've taught us a lot of things. But I think being part of a sport, uh, whether it's football or another sport, you're going to learn, you know, the teamwork, the chemistry, um, and things aren't going to go your way in the course of a game. It's going to be hard regardless of the sport, but how are you going to handle it and what are you going to do to overcome it? Coach, being here, seeing, walking in, first of all, you see all the, the trophies, you see the awards, walk through the weight room, saw guys <laughs> getting it in. I wanted to get a set in myself. Um, but if I'm a high school student, you know, also walking in the office, I'll, you see the championship rings right there too. So uh, we'll show we'll show you guys that off, off, uh, on B-roll, but there's some huge rings right here sitting next to me. So why would I come to Sacred Heart if I'm a high school senior or junior, or what do I get from the Sacred Heart experience? I think number one, if if you're looking at Sacred Heart, obviously we have to have your major. I mean, let's be real here. You right. Know, you're going to school, obviously, to get an education and play college football. Um, so if you're looking at Sacred Heart and you want to come to Sacred Heart, I can tell you the honest God truth. Number one, you're going to get coached. You're going to get coached on the field, you're going to get coached in the weight room, and you're going to get coached in the off-season too, in off-the-field things, you know. Um, you're going to have a lot of academic support. There's plenty of people on this campus that are willing um, to drop what they're doing to make you successful, uh, whether it be in the classroom or we talked about earlier, whether you have a problem um, at home or a personal issue, there's somebody always here that's going to look out for you or can help you with whatever you throw our way. Um, and you're going to come here because, number one, you want to get a great education. You know, we're known, obviously, for our business program, our criminal justice program, our exercise science programs taken off. Um, those are three of the more popular majors that we instill here at the university that are, that are successful. Um, and you're going to come to a small Catholic school. Um, it's going to have a great education. Your class sizes are no more than 30 students. Uh, you're going to get that personal attention. You're going to have an open door policy with all our coaches, myself and the assistants. And like I said, after four years, you're going to leave here a better person with a college degree, and hopefully at least one to two NEC championships. But if you're looking at Sacred Heart, I think it's a great place. It's a great family atmosphere that people attend to the student athlete um, and they're going to help you get through it no matter what is what comes up along the way in those four years and you're going to have a great experience. Well, I've had a great experience here today. I had it when I came and watched that game back in 2014 and I definitely will be back. Hopefully you'll be back in this season. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Maybe not in the cold, but, <laughs> but I'll be back and we wish you the best of luck moving forward. Thank you. I happens. appreciate you coming up here and doing this and uh, hopefully, like I said, we'll see you around this fall. Absolutely.